Welcome. Welcome everyone to the Biology of Musicology. I'm your host, Dr. Todd Samra, and this week we are talking about Peter Gabriel and his legendary album, Up. Now, Peter Gabriel albums are kind of um, an interesting bunch in that a lot of them don't even have names. Uh, there's the first four that he just they, we just kind of call them one, two, three, and then four is technically called security, but it also technically doesn't have a name either. It kind of depends on how you look it up. And then you get So, uh, and the album name for So came about. They're like, you need an album name. You know, what are you going to name it? And I don't know what, I'm not going to give it any name at all. And like, you have to give it a name. And he's kind of wanted to say like, so what? So they called it So. Then the next big major release album uh, that he did, Solo Project, was it was Us. And that was really about his divorce. And that was a two letter word. So when it came time to do this one, uh, he decided it was a good thing to stick with another two letter word. So he called it Up. And it came out in 2002. So uh, in the year 2000, uh, really in the year 1999, he was preparing OVO. Uh, and uh, that came out and ran through the year uh, 2000 at the Millennium Dome. So that was a big project he was involved in. And he had also been involved in a couple of movie projects in the late 1990s. Uh, the City of Angels with, with Meg Ryan and Nicolas Cage. Uh, and so the song, I Grieve, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, that, that song actually was on the soundtrack to The City of Angels, uh, which came out uh, quite a few years before this. Uh, so that song had already kind of been battle-tested in that market, and so he did a different version of it for this. He also uh, did a soundtrack for a movie called The Long Walk Home. Uh, actually, that's the name of the album, The Long Walk Home. The name of the movie was called The Rabbit Proof Fence, and it was a movie about these three girls that walk the length of the... 3,000 mile fence that's put up in Australia to find their way home. And so uh, the song Sky Blue was originally on that uh, soundtrack. Uh, under a different name, it was called Cloudless. And he hasn't produced uh, an album um, really of this kind of magnitude since. He's done remake albums and uh, he, he's, he's had several other little projects that he's done, but nothing quite as significant as this. And of course, it's this was 18 years ago. so. So we're going to start with the song Darkness, and this sets the tone for the whole album. It's like a prelude. Heavy. Dark. And so he's kind of setting this mood, uh, you know, to prepare you for uh, uh, really a, a deep experience. I mean, Peter Gabriel isn't really known for the light and the fluffy anyway. He's known for more meaningful music. And if we look back at his early days with Genesis, I mean, a lot of their albums, I mean, uh, they're pretty heavy. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, Selling England by the Pound. I mean, um, you know, these are, are uh, uh, substantial works, let's put it that way. And they're, they're not really light and fluffy. But then the song balances. lighter uh, contrast and this is something that we look for in classical works these ideas of contrast so yeah he starts out with this you know heavy you know rock and roll lots of distortion but then he balances it there's strings in there beautiful uh, strings and lyrical writing a more lyrical line so this first song darkness very much is a prelude but it also is just a great example of his writing style, of his ability to contrast ideas. The second track on the album is called Growing Up. Of course, he's a bit older. Uh, you know, uh, he's born in the early uh, 1950s. Um, and uh, so, you know, he, he's, he's over 50 when he's making this album. So he's grown up. What I kind of like about this piece is it's all about dots. <laughs> and he kind of charts the evolution of civilization through the use of dots. Two dots gives you this perspective. Three dots gives you that perspective. Four dots gives you greater perspective. I mean, it's really a metaphor. Two dots. The third track on the album, Sky Blue, as I mentioned earlier, was called Cloudless on The Long Walk Home, which was the soundtrack uh, to The Rabbit Proof Fence. Here we go. Well, 
when I saw him on tour, uh, he had he brought these guys along on tour with him. Uh, also from the soundtrack, which we talked about a bit earlier, the City of Angels soundtrack, the song I Grieve. And uh, I Grieve was one of my favorite songs. That soundtrack I thought was tremendous. It was all so different then. Uh, it's a very powerful song, and it really taps in, I think, to the essence of Peter Gabriel's style. And to some degree, the style of Phil Collins, uh, the, uh, y y you know, the, the, the popularity of In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins, for example. Do, 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 do. And the aesthetic of that song. And I think that's an aesthetic that's really somewhat unique to Phil Collins and Peter Gabriel. Uh, and this is definitely a song that fits that aesthetic. It's, it's about death, it's about grieving, it's about losing. Um, and so it's a, it's a very powerful and profound song. Um, so I would encourage you to uh, check that one out. The next song on the album after that is The Barry Williams Show, which is like the sledgehammer for this album. So after something so serious, he bounced back with something completely satirical. So very simple, kind of like for radio. It's really kind of has that kind of appeal to it. That is followed by another kind of comical sound, uh, song called My Head Sounds Like That, where he compares the noises to all of these things in his house and how they sound like his head, uh, what's it, what he hears in his head. And for the most part, now you got an idea for the song and pretty much how it goes. Uh, but there is a lot of development um, in this song. And without being able to play like giant chunks of it because of copyright issues and things like that, uh, he does kind of develop these ideas very cleverly. And that leads us into uh, the eighth track on the album, which is called More Than This, which is what I played at the beginning of the show. And I think in many ways, the most profound song out of this collection. I mean, one of the things about growing up, one of the things about getting older is questioning things, is looking for deeper answers, maybe answers that science can't really provide. And so the more than this really relates to, there has to be something more than this. There has to be a God. There has to be a spirit. There has to be a creator. And that's really what this song is all about. It really kind of teeters on the verge of being almost like sacred music. There is something else there. And all that you have is all gone. It's about having a, a spiritual experience, about questioning uh, the reality of the universe and what it really means, and looking for a deeper meaning. And so this is, you know, th this is heavier stuff. Um, like I said, he was, he was in his very early 50s when he made this album, so he's in a much different place than he was when he was doing Sledgehammer and Shock the Monkey uh, and, and Salisbury Hill, and he's a, a younger man. Um, these ideas are more developed, and I think the music of the album is also quite sophisticated. It's also quite developed, and in many ways is, is really representative of rock music as high art music. This really isn't, exception of Barry Williams' show, radio music. This isn't for public consumption. This isn't pop music. It isn't popular. It's rock and roll music, and it has deep meaning, and it has great artistic value. Uh, so it's, in some ways, much more appealing to people that like classical music or classic rock uh, and these types of things, because they're looking for something maybe a little bit more... Uh, more than this uh, in their music than, than just a catchy beat. I think one of the great things about this album is you can put headphones on, you can listen to it, you can absorb the meaning, and you can really reflect on what it means. And I think that, that, that to me is one of the things that makes albums great, things that make me um, question things or, or see something from a different point of view or perspective. 
um, from an artistic perspective. So, and there's great engineering, uh, there's, there's great production, there's great songwriting, it's great musical performance, there's great musicians. Uh, Tony Levin, for example, appears on this album as he does all of Peter Gabriel's albums. Um, so it's, it's just a, a, a great group of people uh, making some really great music. And so I would like to encourage you to explore Peter Gabriel's album, specifically the one we talked about today, Up.